Hello and greetings from the Auburn University Former SAE Team. I'm Michael Bassey. The Auburn University Former SAE Team is made, of, made up and led by students who design, develop, test, validate, and race Formula vehicles at a collegiate level. We compete in internal combustion, electric, and driverless competitions in the U.S. and internationally. I'm here to t show you our progress we have made in our venture to develop our electric powertrain and test system, which we have chosen for our senior design. Let me give you a system overview of what we've done so far. For our main hardware components, we have a permanent magnet, synchronous motor, motor drives, cooling system, low voltage and high voltage systems, and an ECU. For our software, we're using our ECU supplied IDE, and for our commands and our MathWorks programs for run simulations to generate control loops. We're using a 198 DynoJet chassis dyno for our load absorber. Hi, my name is Chance Embry and I'm in charge of programming the ECU along with data acquisition for the system. The ECU is programmed using a PLC programming language known as Structured Text, which is very similar to the C programming language. The code this IDE is used to program in, along with allowing for debugging of the device in real time and allowing for integration of different devices into the system. The motor controller and the ECU are both connected through a communication system known as Controller Area Network, or CAN. This is a bus type system that will allow the two devices to communicate with each other. The CAN Open Protocol will allow the two devices to periodically send messages to each other, along with having a safety feature so that if either device loses communication with the other, they will go into a fail-safe state. CodeSys also has two other important functions that we make use of for our system. The first is the visualization creator. This will allow for the creation of a human-machine interface, or an HMI, that will allow us to control the system during some of our tests. The other important function is the trace function. This will allow us to plot different variables that we choose onto a graph. This data can then be saved to an Excel file where we can then evaluate the performance of the powertrain system. Hi, I'm Ali Hasmi, and my job was to take care of the interconnections between the motor, the motor controllers, the ECU, and the cooling system as well. The two motors we are using are called MRAX 208, and the two motor controllers we are using are called the EM Drive 500. We have three 1 aught cables from the motor controller to the motor, and two 2 aught cables from the motor controller to the battery supply. Both the motor and the motor controller are liquid cooled with an electric pump and a radiator with a pull fan. We also have two multi-conductor cables to transfer signals from the motor to the motor controller, and most importantly, from the motor controller to the ECU. Hi, I'm Jacob Locke. So, to have a preliminary understanding of how the electric drivetrain would respond to various speed and torque inputs, we decided that it was necessary to model and tune the system in Simscape, which is a MATLAB extension that allows the modeling of an electromechanical interface. I was able to gather all of our system specifications and apply them to the components in the simulation. The program allows the user to define multiple speed set points for different times, as well as the torque acting against the motor. From there, I could adjust the PI controller gains to get an optimal motor response. With the control loop functioning as desired, we could then apply it to the actual motor controllers and fine tune the gains to produce the desired response. We didn't expect our simulated controller gains to be perfect in practice, but they provided a good point to start from. I was responsible for sourcing our high voltage and low voltage systems. For our low voltage system, I chose a 12 volt, 25 amp off the shelf power supply that was wired into our safety, cooling, logic level and logic level power for our motor controller and drives. For our high voltage supply, after reviewing a couple options, we decided to go with the accumulator design to meet competition specifications. Our accumulator houses our batteries, battery management system, and high voltage conductors. Our BMS monitors our temperatures and voltages as the system is running. There are 480 lithium ion cells these cells are raised 12 in parallel and 40 parallel sets in series, which gives an overall of 168 volts and ability to discharge 600 amps, allowing us to have an overall energy capacity of 6.8 kilowatt hours. Thank you for tuning in with the Auburn University from the SAE team, and stay tuned for more updates from our combustion and driverless sections.